with that that most recent trade happening, Darnold, it looks like we're going Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson. 49ers have all but confirmed Mac Jones. Right, which really great for Mac Jones. Like, yeah, I good. Mean, real high move up from where things were previously. He's going to make some money. He is. And people were saying he was the fifth, sixth, seventh <clears throat> best QB. And now right. we're, it's a big, big two week period for Mac Jones. And Justin Fields is falling for reasons. He's falling. He's falling. I'm not sure why. I think he showed what he can do. It's the. He Damn put it, it on I'm, Clemson. He put it on them. Like yeah. that was the Justin Fields show. And I was here for it. It was an amazing display of quarterbacking. It was yeah. great. And to outduel Lawrence head to head, I was like, I know. There was even a bit of a scandal with uh things Orlovsky said about Fields uh through hearsay. I don't know if you heard about this. It was mm. like some people saying Fields' work ethic wasn't there, and then it became this race kind of thing mm. and then then he corrected himself and said hey this is what i heard from two people but i should have sourced it better i went back to more people everyone i'm talking to is saying it's the guy was the first in last out kind of guy whereas that's not the case with i think wilson and an interesting little wrinkle down there because they used to be talked about as they are one two three and you could see fields go to instead of wilson Right. So there's a weird wrinkle going on with fields. Um, I think what is very interesting and something that I'd love to, you know, put my little, my little thingy on is that if he falls, like he's looking to, he's the steal of oh, the draft. Yeah. And I know other people are saying that too, but I'll get my hat in that game because the pressure will be on Wilson and Mac Jones in a way that if he falls and can get that chip going on, let's go. It's, well, it's going to be the field show again. So this this may be a hot take. I don't know. I haven't been as deep on the on the draft this year as I normally am. But Trevor Lawrence is the consensus number one. Has been for three years now. I That's think true. since he won his first the NFC or uh, NCAA championship, they were like, "This is the guy. Thanks he's Trevor. He's the next Manning and uh, Peyton, not Eli." But um, hey, I think true. it's true. It's true. Uh, I think. Justin Fields has a higher ceiling than every quarterback in this draft class. Yeah, it it you, you could be right. He's crazy. The dude ran a four four, which yeah. alone as a quarterback is bonkers. But then you throw in the fact that his arm is a cannon. Yeah, cannon level stuff. He's got a cannon, and he can just drop it in. He can just drop it in the basket. He's gonna I, be the 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 steal. And if it, or we're getting. And you know this happens in the NFL. We're getting the doopy dupes because he is going to go two or three, and they're positioning and doing shit to really shake things out. You know that happens in the NFL that, oh, that yeah. these GMs and these people are always trying to like position. But let's say it goes Lawrence Wilson uh, Jones. He's a steely steal for anyone because if Atlanta stays there, right? Right. They they're staying with Ryan, uh, Ryan. Mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean they aren't going to take his heir apparent. But gosh, if they haven't had a good conversation with Ryan, that's going to create its own BS, Correct. right? And they need if they want to win now, Atlanta, for example, because aren't they just like two and a half years away from this? They were in the Super Bowl two and a half years and, ago and winning by and, by a large amount. Maybe it was a full three, right? It's a full three season. Yeah. But but that's not that long ago, and you have a lot of the same pieces. Um, I think that I'd be, and I want to hear what you think of would you trade it that pick if you were Atlanta or would you take the skill guy, which could be chase could be Pitts, could be Smith could be that you want Ryan to be protected in his twilight years. And you take Sueli, which I might've pronounced the right way for the first time. I'm not Didn't. sure. It's, it's Sewell. Shit. <laughs> the cockiness was high though. It, the confidence was there. Um, I, if you I'm didn't. Atlanta, you didn't. Fuck. I didn't, I didn't. Uh, if I'm Atlanta here, I'm not looking wide receiver because I feel like their wide receiver depth is oh, it's very good. Ridley, it, it, it's amazing that, that they drafted Julio when he was the de facto number one, maybe in the league. And now they're at the point where Ridley is starting to come up on that, in that territory. He's in that, that 15 to, to eight range of 
this guy can can win games by himself. And Julio's a little bit on the come down where he's right. also in that area. Right. So it, it worked out very well for them. Uh, I think they had uh, a decent run game last season. Their O line not great, so I would I would look at to them to fortify that. If you're looking at making one more run in a division that is is not the most winnable, but with questions at quarterback in two of the four teams in the division and the Super Bowl champs being the other team, you're definitely looking good for a wild card. If Darnold is the Darnold of the Jets and we just didn't, we didn't give the Jets enough respect for trying with him. And if Jameis or Taysom go like this, which is very possible, Atlanta's looking at a wild card and, right. and in the playoffs, anything happens, you get in, anything happens. So I could see them going uh, offensive line. If I'm Atlanta, I am a lover of trading down though. Okay. I love moving the pick because you saw because what the Niners gave up. I know Fields and Lance is still there. So it's, there are going to be, couldn't we look and see there are a few teams that probably would be at least making the call, right? Because their quarterback situation is not as good as they would like. Correct. And I, I if I'm staying at four, I'm taking an offensive lineman. If so, I have my pick, I'm trading down. I'm trading down and I'm trying to get assets to, to put around Ryan to give Julio one more good shot and then see who's there as it, far as offensive it's, line. It's the Bears coming up, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's got to be. Gotta, the Chicago Bears are got to be in that conversation. Who who else is just chomping at the bit and totally unhappy with? I mean, I would argue have. Minnesota's ready for a change. Minnesota, Washington you could, football you could be team had. Made, a, made a move, but not a good one, right? Right. They got Fitzmagic. You could look at Washington. You could look at uh, New England. New England is attached to Cam this year. Correct. But are they attached to Cam moving forward? That's Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, very, very good option. Well, isn't this interesting that there's there's – we already know we're probably going to see a lot of quarterbacks in the first round because even if it means that Fields and, and Lance fall, and isn't there one other? Forgive me for not knowing the name. There, there's like there's some yeah dudes there's like there's some guys hot on yeah. You're gonna as a team you're gonna want to move and shake in those early picks because people are gonna get kind of frothy in the middle of the round and be able to kind of strike because they're gonna feel like oh my god I'm getting value oh my god I might be staring at the Pat Mahomes of 2021 yeah and they might even you might see a team unexpectedly snap because if it if he falls to 14 that's the Vikings 15 is the Pats right does Fields get past that I, I would say no because no. both of those could invest a mid first rounder in the future of the franchise and not even upset the current starter right you and I think I think Vegas I think if Gruden falls in love with Fields and what he can bring to the team, you you, you know he loves a first and last out guy. You know Atlanta's he Atlanta's best bet. You 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 got it dead on the money. You trade down and everything is showing that you get that you get you stay in this first round and you get at least one other first rounder plus juice. At least. And you're looking if if you're in the let's say Minnesota New England range, let's say that they trade with them and they get that first and additional additional goodies in the next couple rounds and next year you're you can fortify corner you can for you can get a pass rusher and you can get best you in class go, you, correct you, 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 you're then drafting you know for the need run. and not reaching that's right because the run is quarterback and pass catchers early and then the guy whose name i'll never pronounce well but i wish him well his well is in it it's a lot of wellness yes he's going and then we're going to get into some like top tier at every position linebacker edge corner safety other offensive positions that you know line and things like that guard and tackle and center so it's it to, for me it's a miss if they don't trade because i think they can get amazing value in the middle of the round on their journey to like you said wild card success yeah i think i i think their offense is in a good spot if they can fortify that offensive line maybe maybe take a running back late um, you know, reach for somebody in the fourth or fifth because fourth or fifth round guys now were second and third round guys four years ago because the the, the position is not valued as highly as it was post AP. Once AP hit, everybody was like, ooh, running back, running back, running back. 
And then we some get, people I got want, bit. I, I want Dolphins to get lucky. P- acquire these Bama boys. Acquire. They acquire. Are tanks. They are tanks. Um, so let's 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 put this out. Let's say four gets traded to whomever. Justin Fields goes off the board. Oh, yeah. Fifth pick, Cincinnati. You have your pick of skill players. Do you expect them to do the right thing? This is a chat that me, you, and Mike had the other day. Mike said, I don't know how they don't go offensive line, but Jamar Chase is there. And he's looking into Joe Burrow's you soul. you protect this guy. But does Cincy make the smart pick? The smart pick is, is say his name. Sewell. Penny Sewell. Sewell. Damn it. Sewell. 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 Damn it. That's the smart pick if he's there, right? Yeah. Which he, it looks like he would be there unless someone yeah. jumped up to four to get him. That's the correct pick for the, for the future of the franchise. Not because Chase isn't awesome and not because Chase and Burrow couldn't do Chase Burrow things like they were doing. It's can you afford another Burrow injury? He is the reason you're going to be able to be great. There will be other receivers the the line is so much more important than all the fans. Some good, a lot of fans know, but a lot of the excitement of the draft is never around linemen. But linemen are the reason your other players, meaning your quarterback, your running back, and your wide receivers can do what they do. If he has no fucking time, that ball's never going to get to chase. But I don't, do they need a flash in the pan? Do they need something exciting? Do they need like, because that's, that's Chase and the Burrow, the LSU connect, but they already have excitement with Burrow coming back. If showing protection for him, that the fans have got to rally around that. So I, I'm still where I was in our thread that like it is baffling to me, but they're the bungles that they that they, they the should go line. They will go chase. <laughs> All right, that, that answers my question. So that puts you then as the Miami Dolphins, and this is this is yeah, where I would excited. like to very to excited. close everything out. Yeah. As the Dolphins, yeah. you have the choice between the de facto number one tackle in the draft and Penny Sewell. You have maybe the most freakish athlete in the draft in Pitts, and you then have. Also, Jalen Waddle, Devonta Smith, Heisman winning wide receiver, Devonta Smith. I know, I know. And I like him a lot, okay? And, and if the mock I saw that we, we get him because Pitts and Chase is already gone, super excited. Getting those rookie cards. But that's not what you're asking. You're asking in what the scenario we just said, right? Right. It would be Kyle fucking Pitts, man. Give me the chance to, as a fan, wrap my head around what appears, I, I know not everything Correct. works out, yes. but what appears to be a dude who can be a Kelsey-level tight end for many years, okay? Put him in Miami. He doesn't have to pay income tax. He can have really cool South Beach parties. He went to he could, UF. He could stay. That's what I'm trying to get at. He could stay, and we could have a very influential player on an offense because what we're seeing in the league is that tight ends of that caliber, because not every team has one, okay? They all want one. The teams that have them, it's a a big thing, and it makes other skill position players better because now that guy that was just going to be a block and do outs and catch first downs is gronking out, is Kelseying. It makes other people better. So while it's very exciting, and I would be super pleased with Smith, not over Pitts. For me, for me right now, I am in love infatuated with he's fast he's strong he'll do the blocking he'll he he's it just makes sense and we have Tua who can very much benefit from that quicker outlet Smith would help too I'm not gonna lie of course he runs amazing routes but his size is not Smith's ability he's very thin he's very he's thin. small he's not even that tall he's like he's, six one yeah right six six two forty runs a four four yeah. i'm a little bit more excited about the target two is is fine on accuracy but boy it's a little bit easier when you're throwing six, six. To, to the to the widest of circles yeah i'm not going to be crestfallen if we go if if the lineman falls i just i won't even embarrass myself because the name's not coming because name's just penny you just call him penny penny oh that's yeah. way better yeah why don't i just do that i won't name. be i won't be destroyed if if 
if they take Penny because he's there, right? Because I think, wow, great. We're with Tua. Gusecki needs to come up a level. We, uh, I think we have one other tight end. I can't even remember um, his name because that it's not that He's exciting because I'm all in on Kyle Pitts. So I won't <laughs> be like, I'm not going to be depressed, right? If we get Penny or Smith or, or my, my good friend, your friend too, Cuba, loves Chase. But damn it, this type of tight end is a difference maker more so than than flashy wide receivers that's what i'm going to get at is we've drafted quite a few flashy wide receivers i'm not saying they're apples to apples this dude appears with his metrics and with his tape to be a tight end that can help tua get to where to we know tua can get to i want him i want them rookie cards i'm going after the autos i'm going graded on him even if it, it costs me and i miss Two, I didn't go graded, right? You I got the grade. auto because you you're great. And I got my <laughs> I got my six or seven other. My favorite is the optic Tua rookie card. I'm going on pits. I'll get whichever, right? Even if it's Penny, which is such a depressing rookie card to purchase. <laughs> like my Jake Long rookie cards, Oof. who's our only like number one pick of the last like 30 years. Well, and he was good. He was fine. No, he yeah, was good. It was a yeah. solid pick, just unsexy. Give me pits all day. All right. Please. Well, Please, football Jesus. Football Jesus, hear his Jewish prayers. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel good about that. I I honestly I would like the linebacker. I would not be upset at a wide receiver, and I would not be upset at a linebacker. All those positions would make me very happy. Um, I don't want corner. Some people have us going corner. I don't. You're and, picking when again? Uh 11. 11. 11. Yeah, uh, you know what could be really cool for y'all is if there's still a quarterback or two around Ooh. at that point because of trade options, not even necessarily taking them. But right. No, if, that's what I would think yeah. as well. Yeah. Because that would really mess Daniel Jones' mentals up. If Yeah, if, you got to give him – like, you got Mike Glennon behind him right now. That's not a threatening no, presence. No, Mike Glennon threatens no man. <laughs> he looks like Beaker, so I get yeah. the comfort. You're like, oh, there's a Muppet that's going to play backup if right. I get hurt. When I have a tummy bub, still come in and fix it. <laughs> But that's it. That is the only thing he can do. Um, <clears throat> no, I would I would be cool with trading back and getting more assets. But if if one of the the big three receivers are there, I would really like that. That would be great. I don't think they will be though at eleven. I don't. I don't either. Truthfully, I don't think that they'll be there. Um, but I would linebacker. I think would be nice infusion or trading back to go edge because we don't. I don't think the guys that are going to be available at edge at that point are worth that slot so i'd like to trade down and see if we can get more draft capital but dave gettleman has his own ideas of what should be done he's never traded back ever and i don't foresee this being the first year that he decides to do that sure um but we'll see we'll see i'm very excited for the draft um i don't know if we'll have another recording unless more crazy shit happens before the draft but we will have plenty of post draft analysis oh, for yeah. you guys oh yeah uh we will have a i'm gonna i'm gonna have a video of craig if they draft kyle pitts oh yeah i'll freak and out we will I'll post record the myself. shit out of that i'll record myself we will we will post the shit out of we that we could even um, maybe like i i'll be zooming with cuba because we just made that connection you know what i mean we'll just yeah. send that link out and jam out because then down. you can just record it and then get those moments snipped in i think we there's a possibility I don't know if you want to put this in or not, but like there's some guests that could be on the show. There's some people that want to talk football with people, us. People want to come, come hang out with us just for so. fun because it's, again, it's fun. And if you, if you're having fun, I would, I would subscribe. That's all. That, that's all I would do. That's just me though. That's you just should, what you, I you would should do. definitely subscribe. Um, I do want to shout out. We did have, uh, I had a very good conversation with a gentleman uh, that was very upset at some of Mike Spillane's giant takes. And <laughs> yeah, I, I, I offered for him to come hang out with us and, and have a, have a, a little, a little chat because he was very active. Uh, John Doe 230 uh, was one of them. And Tim McCain, Tim, if you are watching, we, we commented back and forth like six or seven times. Oh yeah. So it was very nice to speak with you. I really appreciate you. Uh, you know spending the time in the comments subscribing chatting with me uh he cannot speak with us unfortunately but 
the comments are appreciated. I look very much forward to you uh, either ripping Mike or being in agreement with Mike over the Giants draft. Probably pick. not agreement. Probably not agreement, but very I am, few I am all for it. Mike. He actually put, I'll, I'll pose this to you because you're a Giants fan by, like by proxy. Like I support yeah, my father. Proxy. I like for you guys. So he, he thinks that the reason Dave Gettleman hasn't done well to this point is because he is someone who needs to be given direction. And Pat Schumer and fucking whoever the fuck out Ben McAdoo or whoever the fuck else was before yeah. him did not give Dave Gettleman direction. Joe judge has been very involved in this off season and the giants have been very pointed in a very a direction of these guys will work for me. That's right. And he is of that, that mindset, Tim. And I, I tend to agree with him. I think maybe he's onto something that before he was kind of like uh like a chicken without a head. Yeah. And now Joe judge has taken said chicken and put the head back on it. And is like, these are the guys that we need. I think one of my favorite things about all the love we have of football in the NFL is literally the amount of speculation we have on management level positions, right? Because while we can speculate on field play, we're actually watching that shit happen, right? As a fan, I'm watching red zone. I'm watching games. I could put together a bit, we do not get to see actually much of what these individuals do, but we, well, are we love more... hard knocks. I love it. True, true. I hard knocks it. gives us that insight. But, like, but you don't get every little. team. You yeah. don't get every team. You don't get as much GM as you get coach typically mm -hmm. in hard Correct. knocks also. So it's just very interesting. I love the perspectives that fans, I, I do it, we do it. And, and it sounds like the, the commenters are also, we're, we're speculating on, so much with so little information. And I get excited about that because we're weaving fictional tales at that yeah, point. Absolutely. And I think that's the we are most- talking right out of our butts. Because it's the most fun. And we're, I mean, most of us doing sports stuff, even the ones that get paid a lot of money are doing some butt talking as well because you're using the same stats we all have and right. the same eyeballs we all have. We're not all Tony Romo calling plays before plays happen. But as football fans, we all know whether the X and O converted or not, right? It, it's Correct. very easy to see. Maybe I don't know which play's coming like he does, but I know if he caught it or not, or if they <laughs> executed it or not. Right. So we, we can all as fans have that. But I get really interested when it's like, okay, is my GM a fucking idiot, right? Is he just it's so terrible? Shit to talk and I've about. had this, I'm an Orlando Magic fan, not to take it away from the NFL, but uh, I think if the if you get employed as the Orlando Man Ma Orlando Magic GM, you're you become dumber. You just everything <laughs> you were better at, it stops happening. You're like, hmm, I had a very successful career to today, but you know what? I work for the Orlando Magic now. Let me bring in someone who's at the end. Let me sell in the sunset. everyone who's verging on greatness. Let me get rid of those folks. Let me bring in everyone who's as close to 40 years old as possible. So I'm not, I, I know I, I, I tangent it over to the magic because I don't know as much about um, the giants, but I love that take and how passionate people get and how we get over. We know nothing of what's going on. No I don't clue. even know as much about what that job entails other than sitting in a really nice office, hating yourself. Yeah. <laughs> because no matter what you do, idiots like us will be on the internet telling That's you right. you did it wrong. That's right. It's just and he's trying, it okay? Yeah. He, he drafted a quarterback from Duke, I think, and that was a mistake, okay? Bad. He bad. knows it. He knows it. He's upset about it. He's trying to make it right. He's trying to true. put some perfume on it. It's true. Well, I want to thank Tim. I want to thank all of our, uh, all the people that like and comment and subscribe and, and talk Tim. with us in, uh, in the comments. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, if there's anything you want us to talk about in particular, just throw it in a comment. I will make sure to shout you out and, uh, and, and bring it up on our next outline. But uh, in the meantime, guys, enjoy your, your pre-draft, enjoy your post-draft, and we will continue to keep coming back to you. You'll, you'll still see these videos, but we'll, uh, we'll see you guys next time.